Here we are at the G-Skill booth for Computex 2019 and right behind me they've got some new memory that's ready to go for the new AMD chipsets. That's the X570 and Ryzen 3000 CPUs. So what this means is you can expect AXMP profiles ready for those new CPUs out of the gate plus a new updated aesthetic. Now what they're doing for this aesthetic is making it two-tone. You've got steel on the left and on the right. However, they're making it two different colors as well as putting ARGB LEDs across the top. So that means they're going to shine brighter than ever and they're going to use a little bit less power compared to the ever popular Trident Z, which was a pretty much a staple across RGB memory. It set the precedent and it was pretty much, I believe to this date, one of the most popular selling RGB memory modules. Now in terms of release dates, you can expect it to try and get released to market by that July 7th date for the Ryzen 3000 series. But also on top of that, the pricing and the actual exact specs of the profiles coming out still yet to be determined. G-Skill is doing a lot of in-house testing with the five different motherboard manufacturers to get the best clock speeds and sure that they are getting the best product out to market. But speaking of the best product out to market, besides this memory, we're going to take a look at some of their hardcore overclocks that they've managed to get here this year on air, whereas opposed to last year, we looked at some of the overclocks and they were only done on LN2 and also water so this is pretty impressive stuff with overclocking and it does show you how much pride G-Skill do take in their memory. So now for extreme overclocking, they've got three sets of memory here running over five gigahertz at low latencies. And the funny thing is, this is done on air. But behind that is something even more special. And that's a four gigahertz overclock over 384 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. This is the latest 28 core Xeon. And they've managed to get this much memory going at four gigahertz. Now they have used the rip jaws stuff with no RGB lighting, but another thing is with the timing, is it going CL18, but the next step is 30, and then the next step after that is 30, then 45. I've never seen this sort of combination of timings, but I believe that G-Skill know what they're doing when it comes to tuning this memory and trying to get it to that four gigahertz mark. They have to drop some of the sub timings. So it was interesting to see that those sub timings were being dropped to then not stress the IMC on that 28 uh, core monster as much as it should have been stressed if the timings were lower and obviously you wouldn't have got that 4 gigahertz overclock but around the corner there's also the AMD side of things so we're going to take a look what overclocks they managed to get with the Ryzen 2000 series and supposedly the overclocks on the memory are meant to be even better on the latest 7 nanometer so we'll take a look at what they got there and then see if that's an indication of what you can expect on those juicy Ryzen 3000 series chips. Now moving on to this side with the AMD things, they've got a four gigahertz overclock on display. Now in-house they have gone higher, but this is essentially a binning process. What, you, what they're showing you here at the G-Skill booth is how they bin their products and what they're obtaining when they ship these kits out to go. So what we've got here is the best case scenario for an AXMP and that's 4,000 megahertz, 1822, 22, 42. This was done on a Ryzen 2700X and a ROG Crosshair 7 Hero. So they're telling me back at the studio, they have a heap of more sets that will do these speeds. And so then that's how you see your XMP profiles when they're shipped to market. So now actually stepping things down in the speeds, they're actually stepping things up in the voltage. So this is 1.4 volt as a previous overclock had 1.35 volt, but there was a difference in the CL of 14 versus 18. And then some of the other sub timings were even tighter on this kit with 14, 14, 14, 34 across the board. So this is pretty much as aggressive as it gets in terms of a possible XMP profile. But do keep in mind, when you start going over those ratings with the CPUs, not every uh, overclock is guaranteed guaranteed since you then are still relying on the IMC on the CPU itself. So again, with XMP profiles, nothing's ever guaranteed outside the actual spec of the CPU. But with the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, we can expect guaranteed overclocks of 3200 megahertz as AMD have laid out in the new specifications. Now, usually with Computex, if products aren't worth featuring and they're just simply boring, I don't feature them. But in this case, this professional keyboard really caught my eye due to its price tag. Cherry MX switches, and it's coming in at 50 bucks. And it was actually really good build quality. But I'm joined by Mark. He's going to tell you a little bit more about this keyboard, what makes it special for that $50 price tag. So this keyboard is called the KM360. And it's a tankyless keyboard featuring Cherry MX uh, red switches as well as a Cherry MX Black for the spacebar. 
and it has uh, detachable USB type C cables for affordability as well as the uh, tank keyless for the professionals on the go. And it has the keycaps in double injection molded keycaps in ABS plastic. So it's very, very durable. The keycap lettering does not fade away as with uh, printed or lasered on uh, keycaps. So look forward to this keyboard uh, at $50 retail. Now also I did manage to test out the rigidity on the keys and they feel really good too. So I'm actually looking forward to this keyboard combination with this black on the space bar and reds on the normal switches themselves. But in terms of the backlighting, it's white LED only. So they've gone away with RGB to reduce the cost and save any software that you would need to install. But you can still change the brightness on the hardware level on the keyboard itself. In terms of release date, it is TBD, but it is hoping to be out before the end of this year. Now the last of this lineup of professional products is the MD550 mouse. Now this is wireless and you're probably thinking, okay, what's so special about it? The actual sensor on board is made to work with uh, transparent and semi-transparent surfaces, which makes it great for business. So just like that keyboard we saw before, they're going with a more professional approach, which is pretty interesting considering you're going with RGB and fancy stuff that gamers would want on the RAM. But what's the shift here with this mouse and what uh, sort of other additional features does it have? Well, in terms of uh, market, we want to expand on our market. And we realized that RGB, uh, the latest RGB fad is actually you know, ignoring and neglecting the business users. And we understand that the business user is also one of our focuses as well in uh, performance. So in terms of this wireless mouse, it's dual mode. So it connects via Bluetooth 4.0 as well as radio frequency 2.4 gigahertz over a wireless dongle that you can put into the um, mouse. There's a slot underneath the battery cap. Now in order to do this tracking, it features the PixArt Poor 3805 sensor. So this is made for these transparent surfaces. So in terms of the release date, when can we expect this to be released? No release date, TBD. So it's still to be determined, but they are aiming for a price point of $30, which is very fair considering it can do all this and the build quality is pretty good. In terms of powering it, it's powered by two AAA batteries. And what's the length of those batteries? And in terms of usage, how much can you expect to get out of two AAA batteries? So ideally, if you're testing under, if you're using it for about eight hours a day, you can expect about six months of battery life out of that. Incredible. That's what we want to hear as a business user and someone who just doesn't want to have the hassle of changing batteries all the time. Anyway, Mark, thank you for your time. And uh, that about wraps it up here for the G-Skill booth at Computex 2019. If you guys are enjoying this content, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comment section below what was your favorite product or information here on display at this booth here today. And they also need some feedback. G-Skill needs some feedback on the colors of the Neo. They're currently considering red, blue, silver, black, black, gold, and they've got to nail it down to three color choices. So you guys in the audience, let us know what your favorite color combinations are on that memory, and maybe G-Skill can make that happen pretty quickly. Anyway, with that aside, hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did and you want to see more content coverage, then be sure to hit that sub button. I'll put the bell mark over Mark's face, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Thank you for watching. It's peace out for now. Bye. Oh, peace out for now. Bye. <laughs>